Okay, so welcome back to This Week in Video Games, and I'm here with Marina from California Studios, and we're here to talk about Sarabek. So welcome, Marina. How's it going? Hi, Tom. Thank you very much for having me on the show. I'm very well, thank you. I'm very excited to be seeing the end of lockdown, I suppose. Um, yeah. Pubs opening, cafes opening uh, shortly, so uh, it's all really good. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a long, um, the longest three three or four months I can remember. <laughs> it sure has, and every day is absolutely the same. Um, so, yeah. How is it? Um, how has it kind of affected your kind of daily working life? Yeah, I'm I'm used to working from home, I suppose. So in that regard, it's not that different. I love to work from cafes, and I really miss that. To be honest, uh, other people you know socially it's it's obviously been very hard and very different um but yeah i really look forward to the things gaining normality of it i love to travel as well and that's um obviously been off the off the radar yeah and it's and it still will be of course for a while yeah um, yeah i i don't miss the flying personally but i i miss i miss kind of um because i, I I, I travel a lot as well and I, I try to go away uh, at least a couple of times a year to sort of fly uh, to far flung destinations and uh, I guess well that is that is the subject of the game Sarawak mm. and uh, I was wondering um, for those who don't know I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about um, Sarawak uh, your game. Sure um, so Sarawak is a text based narrative adventure and gameplay is split between interactive narrative choices, but also um, point and click puzzles. For those who are wondering, Sarawak is one of the Malaysian states on the island of Borneo. So that is partially where the game is set, but it's also set in Oxford. So about half of it starts in Oxford uh, and then you go off to Sarawak. Uh, you play as Mia, who is a college student from Chicago. She's on holiday with her mum and on the night of their arrival, uh, one of the professors at the university is found dead and they arrest your mother for a suspected murder. And it falls to you as the player to uncover clues and go on a, on a trail that takes you uh, to very interesting places to discover quite what is going on and what your parents have kept from you. Does that summarize? Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's... It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> and I, I... Obviously, I, I played the game uh, or a demo of the game during the mm -hmm. Steam Summer uh, Festival recently. How, how, was the, how was the kind of Steam Summer Festival experience for you? Yeah, for us, obviously, with, with everything going on and everything being cancelled, it was quite a good opportunity to get our game out there. It timed well with us having this demo ready Um for players to to experience and for a company like ours this is our debut game uh we just it was really good for the exposure for people giving us feedback um yeah it's been really great and obviously as a player too there are so many titles out there um that has been great to see so many different um demos to play and um, I, I really enjoyed it, and that's why I Thank wanted you. to kind of get you on the show and um, talk about it because I was I was really really impressed. I, I'm a I'm a huge fan of adventure games from old kind of uh, Lucas Lucas Arts days, uh, mm -hmm. kind of Day of the Tentacle and uh, Full Throttle and all all things like that. Um, do you have any games up there that's kind of your inspiration um, that, that sort of led to Sarawak? Absolutely. So similar to you, I'm a big, uh, big 90s kid, big, big LucasArts fan. I think Monkey Island was probably comes to mind from that that era. Um, I'm also a huge fan of, of novels, I suppose, um, particularly mystery novels, thinking Agatha Christie, but also more recently, Ian Rankin, that kind of thing. And they're all very location specific so that's a big element of Sarawak of these novels and of the games I like to play more recent game examples that were inspirations would probably be a case of distrust I really enjoyed that I think you had uh, Ben Wonder on the show mm, recently yeah. uh, so it, it's very much in that kind of style uh, 80 days of course which has also that travel element that interactive um, interactive novel kind of element 
so that that was the inspiration really being coming from that literary background i suppose uh i love watching uh, also watching tv shows that are um that are mysteries but you're, you're watching as a viewer or as a reader sometimes and you think oh I disagree strongly with what the protagonist has just done or there's a really obvious part they should go go for and that's where I thought uh, it would be fun to play around with having you having more agency in the game to direct where uh, you take you take the the protagonist and how to solve the puzzles if that makes sense yeah I, I i was i was really impressed with the puzzles it, it was um the i i definitely recognized the inspiration from things like a case of distrust in 80 days but then i thought the puzzles were really good it, it felt like a really different element of the gameplay um mm -hmm. so yeah no I, I was really impressed and um the uh what was kind of your inspiration behind the behind the puzzles in the game yeah again i'm a big fan of of puzzles even crossword puzzles all the way down so i i draw inspiration from not just conventional games even uh tabletop games um but i what i really really wanted was that the puzzles drive the gameplay forward and you'll notice that all of them are related so you don't just suddenly step off something totally unrelated so it's going to be uh, gates that unlock um, and even there are even some crossword puzzles there's drawers drawer puzzles and lock, lock kind of mechanisms to unravel um, from from my childhood I really enjoyed uh, games like Tomb Raider for example which had its own kind of puzzle-esque um gameplay um i guess that's kind of the inspiration i must say i i am the writer of the game and i also do the artwork but oh, wow. uh, the other half of of california studios is actually my husband duncan uh, and he tends to take the lead on the puzzles he also wrote the engine but yeah the puzzles uh we work on them together but he's definitely the one who comes up with the more um, complex puzzles on the game. Well, that, yeah, that's awesome. So, sh uh, shout out to Duncan as well. As uh, you've got quite a multi, multi talented <laughs> kind of pairing uh, between yourselves there. That's that's fantastic. It it, it is very odd, and uh, we do get asked a lot, like, how does it work being sort of just a married couple who suddenly is developing this game <laughs> together? Uh, but yeah, it's, it's kind of comes together from us realizing that we had these different skill sets that we could combine and, and these the shared pa passion in in uh, puzzle games and we thought we could together come up with something like this that's brilliant um and how how do you sort of find or how do you get the balance right with the puzzles because obviously you don't want them to be too hard so people get too stuck and you don't want them to be too easy so people breeze through them did you um did you test them with um friends or like a t user testing group or something like that yes definitely so one big focus for us with sarawak is that the gameplay needs to to flow uh, nicely so we're not looking for super hard puzzles that are frustrating or um block the, block the narrative in any way uh yeah we we do beta test a lot with very very patient and kind friends uh it's really fun to watch them struggle in the bits you want them to struggle and sometimes it, it's very hard when you are the one writing it to to gauge how difficult or easy a puzzle is so yeah beta testers are really useful for us and um, yeah, well, that's yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, well, I, I I played through uh, the first two chapters in the game, and I was really really impressed. Um, Thank and you. if if players kind of want to find out more about Sarawak, say they've heard of these other games that we've mentioned, um, and they're interested in Sarawak, uh, how can they find out uh, more about the game? Yeah, so the best would be to follow us on Twitter, which is at Cowleyfornian, uh, C-O-W-L-E-Y-F-O-R-N-I-A-N, uh, or just find us on the Steam store, so it's Sarawak. Awesome. And the demo will be up for uh, a few weeks more, so uh, players are welcome to download it and let us know what they think as well. It would be very useful.
Brilliant. I'll, uh, I'll put a link to both your Twitter and uh, the Steam page so people can get hold of that demo. Um, Brilliant. I'll, I'll put it on the, the YouTube version and the, the podcast uh, version as well. Um, so what's, what's your sort of rough um, timeline for the, the game's release? Yes. Um, well, due to the lockdown primarily uh, and cancelling of many different plans, um, we're actually on schedule or even slightly ahead of schedule. Uh, we're planning to launch on PC by January 2021 um, with uh, then porting to um, phone, to iOS um, a bit later than that and even Nintendo Switch. Um, so yeah, we're, we're mostly done um, just refining the last few chapters most of the images are done, most of the, the text is done, the puzzles need a little bit more work and then it's just uh, beta, te beta testing. It's, uh, so I've got a little bit of, of, of experience in releasing software and it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to find that kind of cutoff point, isn't it? Because you're always, there's always like, oh, I could, I could do that or I could fix this or I could, you know, it's, uh, how do you find that kind of cutoff point to know when you're, when, when you're done? Absolutely. And because it's uh, it's our debut project, that's going to be hard for sure. We've been we've been working on Sarawak um, for like four, four years now uh, on and off. So it's going to be so hard to say now is the time to ship it. But at the same time, it's been a long time and you need to you need to strike the line and, and say now now is the time. So, uh, yeah. It's you've, hard. Al you've always got uh, DLC opportunities, opportunities exactly. as well if you want to kind of go back to it. Exactly. Uh, well, that's, that's 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 fantastic. Like I say, it's really. Uh, I've played a lot of adventure games, and I was I was impressed by the the artwork, the writing, and the mechanics. I really really enjoyed it. So I I definitely recommend everyone out there who's listening, go and uh, go and try Sarawak, and uh, yeah, leave um, or wishlist it on Steam and uh, leave leave a bit of feedback. Thank you. Um, so uh, moving on a little bit from Sarawak, I wanted to talk a little bit about your your company. So um, California Studios, it's, uh, it's quite an interesting name. I was wondering if you could uh, tell us <laughs> the, the story behind the name. Sure. So uh, we're based in Oxford and anyone who's uh, spent time in Oxford might, might know of this road called uh, Cowley Road, which is on the east side and it's very... We love it. We live very close by and we spend a lot of time on, on Cowley Road. Um, and it's it's full of indie, indie shops, indie cafes, um, very creative people. And it's got this little nickname. We didn't come up with it. Some people call it Cowley Fornia. I'm not sure why, to be honest. But um, it felt like a good name for our studios because it was created there. Um, yeah, we, we, we create our games on Cowley Road. It must be uh, it must be really exciting to get that opportunity to go back into the cafes. Oh, uh, I can't really. wait! Yeah, I, I walk past them and uh, they're they're looking very sad right now with the chairs on the tables. So, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so th this is your this is your first game uh, as uh, California Studios. And what 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 was the sort of journey for you to get to game development? What what kind of you mentioned you've been working on it for four years um what was your um, yours and duncan's kind of um past experiences coming to this point right so from in terms of duncan uh, is a software developer by my profession um, so he's done a few games before but um all, all hobby passion projects so this is the first series game for him from my my journey personally um so I graduated as a medical doctor, actually, uh, eight years ago. And I worked as a medic in the UK for two years, but I always knew uh, that wasn't really for me. I'm passionate about creating and writing. So I quickly moved from clinical medicine to becoming a medical writer, which merges my two passions of medicine and writing. Um, but yeah, the longer I spent as a medical writer, the more I realized that I like to draw, I like to uh, write stories and storytell. Um, so as a 
as a fashion project I started Sarawak about four years ago, you know, waking up at five before work and, and stolen moments in lunch hour um, to write, to create this game, because I always really liked games. Um, I wanted to write something literary based and that's kind of how I ended up in uh, in game dev. Um, now I'm working on Sarawak full time. Uh, as of a few months ago, and I really can't wait to see where the journey is going to take me. But it's 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 really fun. It's definitely what um, I really enjoy doing most. It, it's so nice to sort of be be the creative, uh, be at the creative helm of a project and see it all come together. And it, it must be really exciting. You're you're sort of on the verge of releasing it out there, um, or I mean, already with the demo. And I imagine you've. You've, you know, you've probably got a bunch of great feedback already. So it must be quite a, almost on the fence of exciting and, and nerve wracking. Absolutely. It's it's incredibly scary having your first uh, creative project out there for everyone to see and criticize. But at the same time, as you say, it's it's incredibly exciting. The feedback we've had is it has been fantastic. Uh, the community has been really supportive and helpful so I've got nothing but positive things to say from my experience. Um, and I, from a personal level, I just can't um, can't wait for people to play it and enjoy it. Well, I'm, I'm sure a load of people are going to play it and a load of people are going to really, really enjoy it. Um, I mean, with, with all this kind of um, developing games, um, do, do you get any time to sort of play any, play any games in your spare time? Yes, I've I've always enjoyed playing games, and even when I was a medic, for example, that was um, a, a big stress reliever for me. But um, increasingly, I've had even more time and even more of an excuse to play games. Um, biggest obsession right now is Animal Crossing, as as is the rest of the world, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've had the pleasure of actually what what I've done during lockdown is go through some games that I've always wanted to play but because of yeah. various life life events um I had missed the boat so I for example I recently uh finished uh Firewatch which is brilliant so nice. beautiful uh, and and so moving and I really enjoyed that I played a bit of Obradin which I had also missed at release which is just another mind mind-blowingly brilliant yeah. um, game it's stunning that game it, it, it's so sort of um simple in in visual um, exactly. but so effective it's uh it's 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 really yeah really really inspirational yeah um yeah i've i've done a similar thing i've kind of gone back and um played a few game or um a few games that i've w always wanted to play mm -hmm. um and obviously the Steam uh, summer sale has just uh, kicked off, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not healthy, is it? But I, I really do find playing other games inspiring. And sometimes sometimes I go like, oh my goodness, there's so much talent out there. Uh, what am I doing? But at the same time, it's also very motivating. Um, because, for example, Obradin is just, just one person, Lucas Pope, creating that, and it's very inspiring. Yeah, I I can't wait to play uh, Pendragon, for example. That was um, yeah. one, one really good title from the uh, Steam Festival. Uh, and I've got over the Alps as well. I've played the, few, the beginning of it, and I really can't wait to finish it. That's really good. The um, I think there's a, a, a DLC available for uh, Over the Alps as well. So it's... Uh, Amazing. Yeah. The um the guys over at Inkle, uh, they're uh, friends of the show, and uh, yeah, they always. I mean, I'm I can't wait to I can't wait for Pendragon. I, I had a play play around with the uh, demo demo mm -hmm. same time as I played uh, Sarawak. I featured it sort of last week or on the on the last um, episode of the podcast, and yeah, really really good guys, and they always always produce good games. So. Um, is there anything, I mean, we're about to sort of get into the new console kind of generation. We're sort of on the cusp with things maybe coming out. Um, well, I hope, you know, fingers crossed by, by the end of the year. Is there anything you're, at, you know, as a, as a game developer, is there, is there anything you're looking forward to there with the kind of the new consoles and new technology? Um Nothing specific is jumping to mind right now. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see what, what's going to come up, really. Um, 
really exciting time in video games right now. And yeah. The uh, the new consoles is almost like 10 Christmases. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, definitely. And it's also expensive, to be very honest with you, if you don't control yourself. So yeah, <laughs> yeah you have to... You have to exercise a restraint, but we'll in, see. We'll see what in, comes up. In my mind, I'm just like I've saved. I've saved all this money during lockdown. I need to put it somewhere. Right. So. <laughs> that's that's what we keep telling ourselves. Absolutely. <laughs> um. Well, it's absolutely fantastic. That's that's all the that's all the questions uh, that I have for today, Marina. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk to us on on this week in video games. Like I said before, I was really really impressed with the game, um, like, and and to find out that um, it, it's just a team of two, um, with with you doing everything on the game, it's really really fantastic. So definitely, everyone go out there um, and give it a go. You can still download it. Uh, do you say it's available still for the next couple of weeks? Yes, so we'll keep the demo up for a few uh, weeks, and then uh, once we have new updates, um, if you if you wish list us on Steam, you'll be able to uh, keep up to date with any updates that we come up with. Brilliant. Well, Marina, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I wish you all the very best. And, Thank you so um, much, Tom. Thank you may- for having us on. We we could maybe revisit after you've released the game, and we could talk a um, a few months down the line. And we yeah, it'd be great to sort of, especially with it being your first game, it would be great to uh, kind of uh, hear your story about uh, how the release went. That sounds fantastic, Tom. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, yeah, real pleasure, and uh, good luck to you both. Thank you so much. Well, that was me there talking to Marina, and thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us on This Week in Video Games. And definitely, everyone, go out there and check out Sarawak. You can wishlist it on Steam right now, and I believe the demo is also available. So go and try it out, and if you like narrative adventure games, I definitely think you'll like Sarawak. Well, next up, let's have a look at the all-platform charts. 